the people that make this place exceptional. I can tell you it's not the buildings, but it is the soul of the people who care about everyone coming through these doors that makes it absolutely unique. Located in the South Camby neighborhood of Vancouver, BC, is the time-worn yet steadfast GF Strong Rehabilitation Center, named for Dr. George Frederick Strong. My name's Rhonda Wilms, and I am a rehab doctor. So that means I'm a specialist in physical medicine and rehabilitation. I get to look out for people who have spinal cord injuries. Uh, I've been doing that for about 16 years. As the largest rehabilitation facility in British Columbia, the sprawling complex specializes in the treatment of acquired brain injury, spinal cord injury, and neuromusculoskeletal treatment. And we'll look at what makes this place so special in The Road Ahead. My name is Andrei Krasikov. Uh, we're here right now at the GF Strong Hospital, and here I have uh, two heads. I'm a physiatrist, uh, I'm a specialist in physical medicine and rehabilitation, and that's a part of my job is uh, as a professor of the University of British Columbia. GF Strong Hospital, it's uh, one of the largest rehabilitation center in uh, Canada, which targeted multiple disabilities. The story of Dr. George Frederick Strong and the facility that would become his namesake began over 70 years ago. As a parent of a child with a spinal cord injury, he was a passionate advocate for rehabilitation and opened his center in 1949, at a time when many soldiers were returning from World War II. We have a program targeted, first of all, spinal cord injury, which I'm part. There is a program focused on disabilities related to brain injury, acquired brain injury, which related to stroke or traumatic brain injury. So it's, it's a multifaceted at, approach to the various disabilities. We get to work within a team environment where we look at what their physical needs are, what their equipment needs are, social needs, medical. So it's really the chance to look at that whole person in our program, we're trying to fix that gap between where they're functioning now and where they could. From its inception, GF Strong has been a leader in treatment and care, focusing not only on the physical aspects of rehabilitation, but also reintroducing and relearning aspects of everyday life, from housework to sport to art. I think it takes special people to work in, in rehab, so people go to acute care and they save people's lives and then they come to us and we're helping them learn to live their life again. Everyone works so well together collaboratively and we all like want to help that client succeed and to come at, which is great about working on the multidisciplinary team is everyone just comes with a different lens and they see everything differently. I think all rehab centers try to do the same thing and this one's got a better reputation. But they do a fantastic job of teaching people how to do what they need to do and getting them home. One of the many patients who have regained independence with the help of GF Strong is Terry Thorson. We met up with Terry at her North Vancouver home. Just one pair of socks, that's it. I'm a mom, I'm an athlete. I'm also a person with spinal cord injury um, at the C6 level, which makes me a tetraplegic. I grew up in Vancouver. I was actually born in West Vancouver. Still on the North Shore. I've traveled around quite a bit, but I have I'm the oldest of five kids, actually. I was really good early on in my years, and then once I hit my teens, it was rebellion time, right? I'm quite tall, so I'm 5'11", and had like a slender build. So everyone thought I would be like an amazing athlete, right? I've been known to run into a few parking meters or telephone poles, so definitely clumsy, and I did not consider myself an athlete at all. But later on, I got into modeling a bit. I went into uh, dancing. I thought that I was gonna be married, have kids. I had a great job at a software company. So those were kind of, you know, my goals is continuing. I was 24 years old, so, you know, I was 
pretty happy with how my life was at that point and wasn't looking forward to changing anything. <laughs> Catherine Simpson is a past patient of the Acquired Brain Injury Program after suffering a stroke that changed everything in an instant and that happened at a most unexpected time in her life. I am a teacher, a mom, a wife, an athlete, and I happen to be a stroke survivor as well. I grew up in Richmond. I'm really a social person um, and grew up playing all kinds of sports, primarily as I got a little bit older, specifically field hockey. And I accepted a field hockey scholarship to the University of Maryland. So after I graduated, I went out east before moving back and uh, pursuing my teaching degree, which is where I met my husband, Ian, and have been uh, in the Richmond School District teaching for five years. So I was teaching grade uh, six, seven, and just loved it. It's a <laughs> crazy age, but yeah, I'm a little bit crazy and I loved it. Since I was in elementary school, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. For me, um, teaching uh, was a passion and also a creative outlet. I really miss that. The Road Ahead will return after the break. And now, back to the road ahead. A lot of what we do here is about managing hope. When someone has that first initial trauma, and then they see me or someone coming in and daring to hope, it's like, why can you do that? How can you do that? It's because I see it every day in the, the people who have lived experience. When you see that capacity to carry on, that is inspiring. As Terry leaves home and drives to meet up with a friend, she shares how her time with GF Strong came to be. When I was young, we didn't do a ton of traveling, a little bit, but uh, mostly to Hawaii or traveling around BC and maybe into the States a little bit. So I didn't really travel much um, until I was 24. 24 was my first vacation I ever took uh, to Australia. I went to go visit a friend there, and that's where I happened to acquire my spinal cord injury. We were traveling around, she was driving. We were heading to a beach one day, and we hit an unmarked hairpin turn on the gravel road. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. I don't remember a lot about the accident. I do remember waking up sort of in the road or the side of the road or however it was. It's funny how you remember just certain little things like one of the paramedics, I remember the look in her eyes and was kind of a look of sadness or um, maybe a bit of fear, not knowing how to kind of take care of my injuries at that time. So. The first hospital that they took me to, they weren't able to you know, deal with my injuries, so then they had to helicopter me to the main hospital, which was in Perth, where, where um, they did surgery and you know, made sure that I was okay. So I was in Australia for two months. I had to wear what is called a halo brace. So at the time, they um, put these bolts into your head in four different places. I think it took a while to have it really click in that it was serious. Probably years, really, to be honest with you. But um, at that point, I really did think that you know, I didn't understand what a spinal cord injury meant. I didn't know the actual severity of my injury. Um, it just felt like I was lying down for a really long time. I mean, sure, I couldn't move and I couldn't feel and there was, I, you know, couldn't even feed myself. I couldn't even move my arms at the time of my injury. But, you know, you still think like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, get better. The team approach to patient intake is part of what makes GF Strong a leader in the field of rehabilitation. Renowned clinician and scientist, Dr. Andre Krashikov, known around the center as Dr. K, helps explain how it works. From day one of admission of the GF Strong Hospital, it takes us usually a week 
to understand what are the complex issues of this person, and then we will meet as a team, including patient, including family members, and then at this team meeting, we will outline the plans. And then together, as a team, we outlining the goal. I didn't know anything about GF Strong when I first went, went there. When I was in Australia, they said that GF Strong was the best place for you to go. Like they're world renowned for being one of the best um, rehab facilities. But that's where I ended up. Rehab was long for me. I was in there for nine months, but it was good. And there, you know, there was some hard times, lots of tears. Let me tell you, it's the most frustrating thing to, you know, think about putting on your pants again when you're sitting down, or, you know, how do you just get into bed and the effort that it takes and everything is now done with your arms um, when you used to rely on your legs so much to do everything and took everything for granted, you know, before. So definitely it was very frustrating. It is a goal of physiatrists to definitely to educate patients. It is not end of the life. Yes, life will be different. Yes, life will be your challenge. But you will be still a human being. And you will have a happiness. Okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. For Catherine, suffering a brain injury involved more than recovery and rehabilitation. She was also experiencing motherhood for the first time with her now three-year-old daughter, Isla. Oh, my. Now a vibrant and active toddler, Isla walks with the assistance of leg braces and a walker, following her mother's lead with her incredible yes. progress as they head out to the park to play. Let's go, let's go. I think I'm unique from talking to other stroke survivors. Everyone is different, but I remember that day very clearly. I was about two weeks um, away from starting my mat leave. The bell rang, one o'clock, um, lunch was over. I went into my classroom. It was like a ping kind of in my head, not painful. And I thought, oh, I should sit down. A student came up to me um, and asked me a question. And I said, uh, one moment, please. And I could hear it in my head and I thought, did that sound as weird as it sounded, you know, to me, sometimes things sound different in your head. And another uh, student said, Miss Simpson, what's wrong? By this point, like my face was numb and I was crying. And um, my principal um, very thankfully said, Catherine, have you ever had a stroke before? And I thought, I'm 31, what a weird question. <laughs> and um, thank goodness he knew. And at this point, I was completely paralyzed on my left side. Um, my speech was uh, understandable, but still quite slurred. And I'm really fortunate to have a, a colleague, a young colleague who was also a mom, who just sat there with me and said, Catherine, the best thing you can do for the baby right now is just to stay calm. Um, and I played that in my head um, through the MRI as uh, there was a surgeon saying, okay, we're gonna have to go up to your brain uh, right now. <laughs> it's around back to me by the time I got to the hospital. And I looked at Ian, I said like, should I do it? And the surgeon was like, no, no, like we have to do it and we have to do it right now. Um, and that's kind of the last thing uh, I remember about uh, that day. the little hill. Okay, you ready? Hold on. You're on like a hammock, like Dad. They decided to um, schedule a cesarean for uh, two days post-stroke. It was traumatic. Yeah, you dream of that moment. We didn't know if you we were having a boy or a girl, so 
course, I, you know, anticipated that moment of like, it's a boy or it's a girl. And um, I don't remember anything um, about that day. And um, because she was a preemie, she was taken to the NICU at BC Children's. And um, I didn't meet her until two weeks after she was born. Not holding or meeting your baby for uh, two weeks was uh, very challenging. Will that spin swing or this one? Yeah. Wanna go this one? Do you wanna go down this one? Okay, you scooch forward when you're ready. Ready, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> she knows that she falls back sometimes. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't sat up really out of a hospital bed uh, for probably close to a month. My mom was actually a retired physio uh, who worked briefly at GF Strong in the 80s um, and she knew how important it was that we do everything possible to get into GF Strong. People coming initially here, they're devastated. They don't know where their life will go. And after first probably two, three weeks when they met the team, when they get a, some kind of directions, this is what you have to be focused now. You have to get a chair. Simple task. You have to learn how to dress. That's why this step-by-step -step approach give patients some kind of structural understanding that life still have to go on. That's a, this magic is a hard work on the patient's behalf, on their family's behalf, and we're here to support them. The Road Ahead will return after the break. And now, back to The Road Ahead. Rehabilitation from a spinal cord injury is a lifelong process. Though it's been over 20 years since Terry has been a patient at GF Strong, she still comes by for advice from one of her old physiotherapists, Dr. Daryl Caves. Hey, Daryl. How's it nice going? To see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah, let me just throw my stuff down here. All right. Well, you're saying that you're struggling a little bit with uh, getting into bed. Yeah. Your mattress height changed or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Typically, I like go right, right up. Okay. Is this, how's this height? Did we uh, it's a good start. Let's see how I do. So, this is kind of where I get a little bit stuck, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah. Not bad. You see how your chair is kind of pushing out a little yeah. bit? So you're losing that push down. You're pushing away quite a lot. Oh. You're losing some of that lift initially, but okay. not bad. Yeah, you did start. definitely you, you, help me though. You went for it there. <laughs> Try that. Okay. Hop, hop back down. That'll be easy. Yeah. Even try, even try lifting down just for practice. Okay. Okay. Let's go again. I mean, that's all that I focused on for the first few years. Uh, probably first five years of my injury was normal. Like. I, I, I didn't actually even own mirrors in my home because I didn't want to see myself as a person with a disability. When I look back on it now, I was fighting for my identity. Like I always said that Terry is dead, right? So I was fighting for what I thought was the new Terry, so to speak. But there wasn't really a new Terry. Like, you know, it's still the same Terry. I, I'm not that person is not dead, it's still within me. But I think that was just like the, the finding of your identity, right? Like I kind of thought I would never wear a skirt again, right? I hated my body and how it looked. And um, so I think it's really important to, it sounds so frivolous wearing a skirt and putting on makeup, but it's just so important for that, that self-identity. Here's where you moved your hand forward, which is lovely. So you're yeah. able to get into that space, yeah. right? And your head's way over, so that you're in that triangle. So we're just going to go here to here and back up. Okay, yeah. And back again, and I'll just unweight you. Okay. So that's nice. Okay. And that's nice. So your lift down is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 that's you. I might be able to get into those damn hotel beds. It's got to practice. <laughs> 
it's such a traumatic injury. It's so hard. There's so many things to, to go over and so many things to learn. And it, it's so hard to take that all in and then also feel um, like, you know, you're a whole person. Your balance is pretty good. You've kept, yeah. you've kept yourself in good shape, actually, Terry. At GF Strong, it's almost like they're teaching you, right? So they're helping you find this new sense of normal and, you know, helping you learn about your injury and helping you adapt to your injury. It's really the people and the expertise that they have there that are exceptional. The physiatrists and the um, therapists and, you know, the nursing and the education that they have. I mean, it's uh, really one of the best in the world for that. We have to find something in our life what is excite us. And we do know that there is a something what is our brain produced that excite us, that give us pleasures. The substance is called endorphins. We have a piece of chocolate, endorphins reliefs, and we feel pleasure. Exercise also releases endorphins because we're moving, because we're exercising, because we're strengthening our muscles. The other thing that just came to me is like passing. You want to work on some end of the mat, like sure. balance stuff? Well, yeah, that's, that'll be harder for you. Yeah. <laughs> Better to use the volleyball since it's what we use in rugby, right? Yeah. Okay. Whoa! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I feel really unbalanced. <laughs> Exercise give a person with disability incredible boost of energy, also incredible aspect of psychological support, of being involved in something different outside of their daily routine that brings them a pleasure. Sport really made me as strong as I am today, for sure. I mean, you know, physically, because, you know, with all of that effort that you're putting in, you're definitely gaining strength and, you know, fitness. Really, I think it was kayaking was the first thing I started. Uh, and then I really enjoyed it. And I thought, I wonder how many other things are out here for me to try. So then I just started everything. Like I tried skiing and I tried, you know, rugby. Racing was just one of those things that I was able to, um, to give a go. And I, I really felt connected to it. And, you know, whatever, I wasn't expecting really to go to the Paralympics at that time. I'd only been really racing for a few years. And I got a call months later that said that there was a spot that had opened up on the team and I said yes and yes, ready to go. So, you know, a few weeks later they shipped me over to Athens and I was able to represent uh, Canada in the 400 meter. All right, thanks, Daryl. See ya, Terry. See ya. Take care, <laughs> say hi to Lucian for me. I will. I never wanted to connect with people just because of disability. I want to connect with people that have the same interests as me, right? So sport sort of allowed that and then also has this different level. Another person for whom sport has been life-changing is Duncan Campbell. As the groundbreaking creator of wheelchair rugby, formerly known as Murderball, Duncan is both a regarded athlete and one of the most important figures in the development and popularization of wheelchair sport. I'm retired now, but I was a recreation therapist at GF Strong. Uh, for about 15 years on the Adolescent Young Adult Program. I came here as a rec therapist. The role is to introduce options to people, try to figure out what they want to do or like to do so that they can do it again when they leave. Ready? One activity Terry was introduced to was sport and still continues that as she plays catch with her son and husband. Well, a lot of things happen with sport that are intangible. They're not actually sport. Their direction, their education from the other people that are involved in sport. So you learn things that you wouldn't learn in the rehab center. People get stronger and better. They see what people can do. You know, because you look at some of the people that play at, play wheelchair sport at the really high levels. Whoa, some of the things they can do is amazing for what level of disability they have. 
you know, but and it's sport that's driven them to that. There, move your shoulder. Just like in rugby, baby. I think that that's something that is very important in a rehab center to have somebody there that leads a little bit by example. Somebody that's actually in a chair. Somebody that's a quadriplegic. You know, they need to ask questions to people that actually know what's going on. I think it's, it's imperative to have, you know, support from people that have lived experience similar to your own and my own. Another crucial aspect of GF Strong is community. At an Oceanside Park in downtown Vancouver, Terry and a friend catch up over drinks. To the park. To the park. So what did you get up to today? I did stuff. Hey! Uh, stay busy. Nice. I think I fell asleep at 7.30 last night. I can't do that. Oh my god, I was exhausted. Everybody's going through the same thing you are, and being able to share that with people that understand is really important. I, personally, I don't really think there is magic going on at GF Strong. I think there's a lot of dedicated, hardworking people that make changes for individuals that are in very tough circumstances at the time. Tough, tough job. The Road Ahead will return after the break. And now, back to The Road Ahead. Catherine's rehab routine is ongoing and rigorous. Regular check-ins with one of her physical therapists, Tracy Kung, helps keep things on track. And I was thinking maybe we could warm up on the elliptical trainer. So I don't even need to help you on there anymore. Ready, steady. So if we get your left arm, left hand, onto this handle here, how does that feel? Good. But it's hard. I bet. It's, it's hard work. There you go. There. It is really frustrating because as an athlete, you just want to do more. More reps, get in the gym as much as possible, and with recovery and uh, brain injury, uh, your body uh, can reject that. And there's only so much you can do, and you have to acknowledge that. There's all kinds of funny things that happen, like, oh, when I get tired, all of a sudden my legs start shaking, or my affected hand you know, comes up here and moves into a fist. And so you learn that you can only do so much. How's your shoulder feel in this outstretched position? Good. It looks yeah, it really good. The big thing was finding out that there was a bed at GF and we all just celebrated. I did not know what to expect. Kind of feels like being the new kid um, at school. Um, it feels like all of a sudden you're not just, you know, a number. You're a person and you have a team of people uh, around you and they have uh, the talent and the expertise to um, help push you um, as much as you're able at that time. It's exhausting um, because you go from doing nothing to having this schedule um, where everything is very regimented. Um, my coach at university always said the way you do one thing in life is the way you do all things. And that mental resilience uh, really, and competitiveness, I think has served me uh, so well. Because if you don't believe in yourself, there's only so much therapists and hospitals and doctors can do. So I just approached it like training. So this is our forced use of Catherine's arm. So can, can we work on some just weight shifting? Over to the left side, over to the right. You learn quickly that you're playing the long game. I just remember thinking like, no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna live this way. I'm different, you know, like, I, I wanna get better. I wanna be back to where I was. And they help very gently guide you through that process of grieving and recognizing that things are not gonna be uh, the same as they were. They can get better, um, but they're not gonna be 
are the same as they were before. There you go. Yes, it's so much better. I'm three and a half years out and haven't used my left arm or hand functionally for that. So you have to celebrate the small things because it's so overwhelming and it's so slow. There, feel that, stay there. So this is a full single leg stand on your left leg without hyperextension. Can you feel that? Mm-hmm, soft knee. Relax your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let yourself brace anywhere else. Sear this pattern into your brain. You could not do this the last time we were on here. These people are a part of your journey. It's so much more than being a physio or being an occupational therapist. They are helping guide you through this huge life change. Oh my God, you're so cute. You're like, I forget how to run. You were doing this. Yeah, I can't believe it. You were doing this. I like, I'm on my story. I go out and run. See you, Catherine. A member of the GF Strong team who has had the opportunity to work with Catherine and be a part of her recovery journey is occupational therapist, Kelly Oliver. I've worked here at GF Strong since 2005 and primarily with the um, stroke and brain injury population. So, you know, Catherine is an amazing individual. You know, at the time she had her stroke, she also had her first child. That's a pretty unique situation. There were a lot of challenges in that she's, not only is she trying to recover and learn to do things for herself, she's also learning a brand new role of being a new mom. We had some unique goals. How would she breastfeed her and hold her without being able to use her left arm? Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling, so we're gonna put on the resting hand splint. We had to be creative in figuring out how that might work, and that was obviously a very, very important thing to, to Catherine, to be able to bond with Isla and participate in her care as much as she could. Okay. Okay, let's get this girl to bed. <laughs> when you move home, reality kind of uh, strikes because you're in a little bit of a bubble um, at GF Strong. It's hard. It's a big transition and not only for you, it's really big for your family. On top of that, um, I was all of a sudden a mom. Um, and so I was just trying to say find my legs, but that's a bad uh, expression. But um, I was trying to figure out both of these things that were just had happened at once. How's it going there, Mrs.? It was exciting to kind of transition from physio, uh, getting into pursuing some new things uh, with rec therapy, and uh, the rec therapists are wonderful at uh, taking into account the things that you enjoy. One of the activities Catherine and her family enjoy most is cycling. On a beautiful day, the family heads out for a ride. As Catherine's husband totes their daughter on a bike trailer, Catherine works with recreational therapist Courtney Stebby to get rolling on her adaptive bike. With a customized setup that accommodates Catherine's needs, she is able to independently cycle once again. So all the steering's done with the right hand, all the shifting, brakes, everything is done on the side. So someone who has a left hemiplegia, who has less function with their left hand, can still operate uh, a bike. My name is Courtney Stebby, and I'm a recreation therapist on the Acquired Brain Injury Outpatient Program here at GF Strong. I see clients who have a, an acquired brain injury, so that could be a stroke, it could be a brain tumor, or some type of traumatic brain injury. What I do is I help get them back to doing things that they enjoyed previously um, related to recreation and leisure. So as I'm ready, I'm gonna kind of dictate left, right, and kind of direction and just point out any bumps, logs, you know, Sweet. stuff in, that might be in our way. Awesome. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Catherine had an extensive competitive background. She came in wanting to find something, sport, that was competitive and, you know, just an out, it was an outlet for her and she just, you know, excelled at that. So when we started talking about opportunities and what was available, she just like wanted to do it all. 
So we got her, you know, back to swimming, uh, walking soccer, pickleball, adaptive cycling. Like she was, she was game for everything and she loved it. It was challenging her on so many different levels and it was like a real world experience and what she would get outside of PE where everything's structured and, you know, stable. This was like in the moment reaction time that she was focusing and working on. The whole thing of GS Strong is you know, rehab and exercise and interventions, but like, why not have fun while we're doing it? And Isla, have fun on your next ride. Yeah, now we can go for family trips, <laughs> It has just been so exciting to not have to just watch from the sidelines. To be able to do the stuff as a family is like, Priceless. As part of reaching her recovery goals, Catherine uses Modus Nova, an innovative at-home program that uses robotics to help with repetitive motion. Kind of like the gamification of therapy and repetition. Um, the machine can assist you to use a little bit, but basically you're playing games to try to get reps in to move your wrist. It requires a lot of mental energy because you're trying to get something to move desperately. You're giving it everything you've got, knowing that it probably won't move, but you just keep trying, keep trying. My long-term goals are really to be as independent as possible. And for me, really focusing on getting some movement and some functional use of my left hand and arm. The average game is about four to six minutes. The hardest part for me right now is I'm trying really hard, but it feels like I'm not doing anything, which I don't know if I actually am moving it at all, but you have to just keep trying to communicate to your limb, even though there's a big part of your brain that's like, Psh, well, it's not gonna move anyway, but you just have to um, keep trying to talk to it. It took two years to be able to move it at all. My mentality, which is maybe ego-driven, I'm not sure, but is why not me? Uh, be the person uh, that uh, my therapist can say, you know what, there was this woman who got a bit of her wrist or her fingers back um, because I so desperately um, wanted to hear that. The Road Ahead will return after the break. And now, back to The Road Ahead. Lucian, you're gonna have to help me pretty soon, love. For Terry, the future is full of promise. Back at home with her family, she shares some of what's ahead for her. Soy and egg. Do you wanna sit down, Lucian, or do you wanna stand up? Right. I'll hold the spoon and put in one, one of those. Future, oh man, well I'm trying to like work on my career now. My son's a little bit older and more independent. Actually taking some coaching classes right now and hopefully, you never know, maybe be a rugby coach one day. It smells good. Yeah? Careful, you got meat hanging from your fingers there. Yeah, and watching Lucian grow and become a man, essentially, right? It's, it's pretty cool to, to witness that and, and be part of it. I think it's really important to not think of yourself as a disability, to, you know, remember, you know, that that's not what defines you. You're still the same person. You're still you. Just remember that that's really the most important thing and your values and who, what you have to offer still are the same. Cheers. 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 Catherine's life looks different than she imagined before her injury, but the support from her family and the bond she's formed with Isla give her a sense of gratitude for all she has. Why the <laughs> This only works because of family, but particularly um, with a baby, um, our family just jumped right in and full time have been there for us. It looks different than we thought um, it would, uh, but that's okay. 
Jim. Wow. Steph. Never seen you do that. I love Good Jim. That was really nice. For now, I am at home and have such a special relationship with Isla and I have time with her that um, I wasn't expecting. It's a bit overwhelming, yeah, thinking about the future because things are so different than you ever anticipated. But uh, the thought of uh, being a part of watching her grow is uh, exciting. And uh, to know that bit by bit, I'm finding more things that genuinely bring me uh, joy and uh, laugh, just keep exploring and uh, find a new path. Uh, yes, it is old facility. It is not the newest building and so on, but it does matter what is counted, people who are working here. And I believe this is what I believe Jeff Strong is about. I think the people here are amazing at being talented, experienced, and committed. It's the people. It is the therapists, um, the nurses, the physiatrists. Everyone who works there is not only, you know, the best of the best in terms of expertise, but in my experience, they are helping guide you through um, grief and this huge life change. The, the people is also, you know, the peers that I think you also meet. You don't think about it at the time, but it's just a big peer support, like on the floor, everybody's going through the same thing you are, and that kind of creates this whole magical environment, I guess, that, you know, it's through a really challenging time, so you realize that strength that you have within you. If I could give any new patient coming to GF Strong some advice, I would say this is going to take more patience than you think. Persist, learn, hope. You can do all of the hard work of preparing your body for whatever recovery is going to happen. And the team around, what we will do is we will cheer on every single iota of success that happens. I trust, yeah, and believe now, which I didn't for a long time, that there's exciting and happy things ahead for me. Producer, Mike Wavercan. Directors, Mike Wavercan and Cody Graham. Writer, Jessica Rivers. Director of Photography, Luke Connor. Production Manager, Sam Graham. Editor, Alec Richardson. Graphics, John Roney. Sound Mix, David Parfit. Narrator, Lisa Brandt. Special thanks to GF Strong staff, patients, and their families. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Content Development Specialist, Sylvia Faquette. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.